Welcome back to Your Loud Take Your Husband. In today's episode, it is my second solo episode where I walk you guys through how I structure my life and mistakes I've made and ways that I've fixed it and kind of this recipe for success on how you can structure your life and have more energy and be more productive and be a better friend and mom and business owner and wife and better person to yourself. We start with that, obviously, but really how to build a life that you can really enjoy and show up as your best self. So whatever stage you are in your life, this is for you. You know, I use where I'm at right now, where I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I have a business, I've got friends, I've got all the things, and sometimes it can feel overwhelming. But with this, with everything I give you in this episode, it feels a whole less overwhelming. So please hop in and enjoy this episode. Welcome to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband, a modern day love story. I am Remy Stern. I'm a relationship coach, and we are going to talk all things relationships from being single to dating to being engaged, married, who you marry is the most important decision you will ever make. If you're looking for a wife, which is a beautiful thing to do, the best thing to do is to choose wisely. If you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? Everybody else has it right. Then you are in the right place because trust me, nobody knows what they're doing. I'm so excited. Please hop right in, listen to this episode, listen to this series, and we are so excited that you are joining us here. Okay, so in today's episode, I am going to tell you guys a little bit more about my life and how I structure my life in being a mom and being a wife and being a business owner, a friend, you know, having time for my for myself and and because that's a huge part of it for me is is practicing what I preach. So really enjoying my life and having time for myself. I like to think of it as like buckets in our lives that we have to fill up and, you know, sitting and thinking about, you know, what are the things that I really want to share with you guys? I've been, I've been asked a lot of questions, you know, Jonathan, I will mention things on the podcast about kind of ways that we set up our lives and, and the ways that we set up our relationship. And I've been asked like, oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? And so I kind of wanted to answer all of the questions here of how we do all of the things we do, how we structure our relationship for the most part and, and spend time together and be okay when we don't see each other so much and just really give you guys like the whole breakdown with very practical tools. So when I was sitting and thinking about what I wanted to share, Maybe I'm hungry, maybe I'm not, I'm not sure, but I imagined it as a bowl of ice cream. (laughs) And when you go get to an ice cream place, you don't just want one flavor, at least I don't. I mean, maybe you do, who knows? I like three flavors. I'm a good, like, I want to try that flavor. So one scoop of that, one scoop of that, and one scoop of that, okay? And your ice cream has to be in a bowl, of course. And what's an ice cream without the toppings? nothing. I'm the type of person, I don't know about you, but I love a good like chocolate on chocolate on chocolate on caramel and chocolate. You know, I'm not like the the light sorbet person. I'm like the, give me all the sugars with like the Oreo crumbs and all of that. Okay. So if you're hungry like me, then you will really be wanting ice cream right now. But what I really mean by this, and I'm kind of copying Jonathan right now, because he is fabulous at these metaphors for life. Um, So I hope I do as well as him in describing this. The me time, which is often the hardest one for people, shouldn't even be a bucket. You know, of course, it's something we have to fill up the most. But in the ice cream analogy, it is the bowl that holds the ice cream. Because if we're not filling ourselves up, how can we do it for others? And we often see it as selfish. You know, if, if you make time for yourself to work out during the day, or if you go on like a weekend getaway or you say no to certain plans to do something else. Like we we have such a hard time filling this bucket and prioritizing it, making it the first one. So it it is where I'm going to start. I'm going to create the vessel to to do all of those things, right? And this is also the process of having a very strong foundation to kind of hold the rest of the things. So we need the bowl. I'm going to keep going through my analogy and then I will explain each each ice cream and bucket. (laughs) And then I say that you should have one to three 
flavors. <laughs> really not many more because then your ice cream is way too full. So one to three flavors and each flavor is going to be a bucket of your life or a category of your life that you want to fill up. And then everything else is the toppings, is the extra yumminess. The, the, what is ice cream without toppings? You want the toppings. So that might be friend stuff. That might be volunteering. Like you, it's, it's a must to add it into your life, <laughs> but, but it's not the, it's not the cup and it's not the three flavors. Cause if you put too many flavors, you're in big trouble and, and then everything just meshes together and you don't actually show up for any of them in the proper way. So this is kind of the way to show up in the most optimized, full, whole, vibrant way in your life. So we're going to start with the me bucket, which is the bowl for the ice cream. So where do you pull in time for yourself? And how to be practical about it? And first, I want to tell you guys a story about me. And probably the easiest, best time to look at this and most recent is after giving birth, right? So you all of a sudden, especially those first weeks, months of giving birth, like you kind of don't want to expect unless, unless you're just like so in tune with this work and so good at it. Like you kind of have to just let everything go. Let all of this go. The beginning is <laughs> mayhem in the most beautiful way possible, but you get to a point. So let's say for me, it was three, four, five months in and you're like, whoa, where am I in all of this? You know, I've, I haven't been sleeping so much, maybe breastfeeding, maybe you're not. And, and you're kind of tied to, to being home and limited in certain things you can do. Although it is the most beautiful thing in the entire world, of course, um, if someone chooses to do it. So, and you're still trying to be a wife and you're so you, you just kind of like are given this opportunity to stretch all these parts of you. And and so for me, three, four, five months in, let's say, I was like, where am I? <laughs> where did Remy grow and go in this equation? And and I was moving by my body, but not the way I did before. And I was seeing friends, but also not the way I was before. And so you're just like, there was this old Remy and then there's this new Remy. And how do I bring back a little bit of the old Remy per se into new Remy? And I remember calling my life coach because again, I will have a life coach for the rest of my life. And there was a point that I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, I don't feel like I have the ability to have any time for myself. You know, I feel so busy all of the time. And this was even before I was working, which is funny because now I'm so much more busy, but I get a whole lot more done. <laughs> and I don't feel like I can be a wife. I don't feel like I can do any of it. And how do I do this? So very simply and something that I've always done with my clients. So it's so funny that, you know, you forget these things and you also, it's much easier to give other people advice than yourself than taking it yourself. So she said to me, and something I do with my clients is called a loves list, but you make a list of things that just make you really, really, really happy. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, but the things that fill you up, that light you up, that like close your eyes with me for a second and just think about one activity, one person, one place, one, one thing that like makes you so, so, so happy and just sparks that joy and like puts that smile on your face. So that. And you've got a few of them. You've got a lot of them. The more you sit down and, and start working on them, the more they'll come to you. And she said, Remy, go do one of these every single day. I don't care which one it is. If it's a big one, if it's a small one, go do it one every single day. And I'm sure I started small, probably with going outside and buying a coffee at the coffee shop across the street instead of being stuck inside all day long. And for me, you know, you if you've been listening for a while, you probably know what mine are and, and they become, you have to make them become routine, like something that's just an automatic go-to. So really the one that, that changed everything and it sounds maybe cliche and simple, but moving my body, <laughs> going to my workout class. I personally, um, as I'm sure you've heard, really do believe in the power of movement in your body. Um, I think it is the easiest, best first place to start um, is to move your body. And it's just, it can never be bad. The only way it can be bad is if you put a lot of pressure on yourself, which you'll see through this episode is a huge theme. If you put pressure on yourself for anything, you might be in a little bit of trouble because 
think about when you put pressure on anything, it ends up exploding, you know, like holding onto something so tight, it just like might explode. Like you want to let things breathe and be enjoyable and open and all of those good, juicy, yummy things. So, so the more fun and this word kind of (laughs) might sound weird, but like, I like to say pleasure over pressure, like how much can I enjoy the thing I'm doing? So for me, it was movement and I became absolutely in love, obsessed with my Pilates class. It was easy. It was four blocks away. And I went every single day and I made it because it was a way to get out of the house. So to fill that bucket for myself. And that was really just the first entry into being like, okay, wait, here is Remy again. I just started to build in more time for myself. And another way I like to think of this is we all have specific needs and they are emotional needs and physical needs and spiritual needs. I do like to break it down into mind, body, soul, emotional, physical, spiritual, and making sure that those needs are super, super met. So a good thing to do is to sit down and to write out all of your needs. Okay. The things that like you're sitting there thinking, oh, I miss that, or I want that, or how can I not have that? Or, you know, it's it's that part of you that's yearning for those things. And maybe when you see someone else do it, you might be like, oh, why do they get to do it? You know, I've definitely had that. I remember there was a point that all of a sudden I I saw someone in my life who would like sleep in all the time with multiple kids. (laughs) And I was like, actually a few people. And I was like, why do they get to sleep in? Like I'm up at 6 a.m. every day, you know, trying to be that like martyr best version, like best, 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 right? But all I wanted so badly was for like once a week, once or twice a week, just no alarm clock just sleep in, you know? And I wasn't asking for it because I thought that I couldn't get it. But then I was like, hey, you know, what if my husband did it one day? Or what if my favorite is that when when I sleep at my in-law's house, I say, okay, we're sleeping there for the weekend, but I'm on vacation. So anytime I sleep there, it is the biggest treat. And they wake up with my baby in the morning and I sleep in till like nine or 10. It's the best thing in the world. (laughs) So really getting clear on your needs I want you to literally sit down. We've got two lists right now. So remember this. First list is your loves list. Just things that make you happy. Getting coffee outside, going to lunch with friends, adventuring around your city, working out, going to meditations, getting a massage, getting your nails done, walking in the park. Mine's, these are like probably a lot of mine. Um, getting outside and scheduling in one a day. As small as it can be, as big as it can be, amazing. Then I want you to go a step further in like your needs. Okay. So again, mine was sleeping in once in a while. Like it was a need. And you can say it's like a silly, selfish need, but it was a need. So I made it so it was possible. And I asked and my husband loves it. He wakes up with Juliet and he just gets Jonathan. Obviously, you know, Jonathan. <laughs> and he gets that moment with her. And it's like so special. So, and sometimes we'll do, he wakes up, early Saturday and I sleep in and then Sunday opposite. So, so you make it work for you. Another one for me was I really wanted to go on a retreat, you know, a a meditation retreat, a spiritual retreat. And I asked, you know, it's so scary to ask sometimes, but I did. I said, listen, this is something that I really want to do. And I still have more. (laughs) I've got my list of ones that I want to go to. And I'm so excited. And thank God, Jonathan, I really push for each other to go do these fun things. And I said, here are my list of things, you know, and I I gave it to him and we said, great, what retreat can you do? We found Joe Dispenza. I was like, amazing, booked it, went seven days. It was challenging. It was hard, but it was spectacular and amazing. So you can be crafty in your life. You know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but if you don't get your needs met, then you are going to be resentful. You're going to be unhappy and you're not going to show up for people in the way that you should in your life. So the second list is your needs and how can you get them met? You know, what, what are those crafty, fun ways that you can make this happen? Sit down and plan it, schedule it. Another theme of today is going to be the importance of intention and planning, honestly. And it's so not like me. I'm the least planner. Jonathan's going to laugh when he listens to this. He's going to be like, you? <laughs> but it really is true. So again, I'm not perfect at it, but I'll show you where I do really bring it into my life and the ways that I've improved on it. So now I'm going to go into how to be a a wife (laughs) and how to balance your relationship in this all. 
And I find it funny because in the last episode, we talked about how we usually go to bed at different times and people are <laughs> reached out to me like, how does that work? How does this, you know, for some reason that one like got people reaching out. <laughs> but the way that that works is that I'm tired and I'm trying to focus on my sleep routine. And so I really try to get in bed as early as humanly possible and read a book instead of use my phone and wind down and not work. And I'm not perfect at it. You know, I'll go through times where I'm really not good at it, but right now we're doing good. So that's, so that's good. I just feel better. I feel better when I sleep more. I feel better when I wake up early. I feel better when I go to bed early. So I do my best. Jonathan, on the other hand, which I understand, he would love to. It would be great for him if he did, but he likes TV a little bit more than I do. And, you know, he's been working all day, so he wants to catch up on a few like email things or podcasts, you know, sit and listen to podcasts. And like, he doesn't get home from work and basketball and just want to run to bed, you know, and he'll get home around that time. So, so the first thing is accepting that the relationship changes, you know, and this is when you have kids. And before, obviously, we we're going to bed at the same time every night and talking in bed and cuddling. Like, it's just different now. And I, and I accept it. But you have to be intentional to work at the relationship. You can't sit back and be like, you know, it's, it's the most important relationship in your life. Marriage is super, super, super important. And it's a relationship that we don't actually think enough about. I heard something in a podcast recently that I loved, which is like, if you were to buy a car for the rest of your life, right? One car. Someone said you can buy one car the rest of your life. First of all, which car would you choose? Would you choose a minivan for the time that you have kids? But when you're young and fun, like, do you really want a minivan? Maybe you want like a convertible, but when you have kids, you know, that convertible isn't going to work. So choosing like the right car that can kind of take you through life. This is the same with a marriage. Like, somebody who can go through different stages in life with you and you you can feel comfortable that you can ride with them through every stage. Like that's super important. So that's in choosing a partner, of course. And then if you were to have one car the rest of your life, you would take really good care of that car and you would get it serviced and you would get it washed and you'd put the best gasoline in it. And too often we don't do this. We spend so much time on our other relationships and you know, at work, you like put up with conversations with people that maybe you don't want to have because you're like, oh, I have to. But when I get home to my spouse, I'm going to sit on the couch and I'm like too tired. Don't talk to me now. Like it, we have it a little bit backwards and that's okay. And part of it <laughs> is also the acceptance that once in a while, like, yeah, Jonathan gets home and has had a long day and doesn't want to hear about every single detail about what I ate today. Like, it was a transition that I had to really learn about because at first I'm like, does he not care? Does he this? Like, no, he's just tired and just needs space to unwind. So in a marriage, I'm going to put this as like three buckets as well. You know, I, I like the, there's the big buckets, the big important things. And then within them, you want to break it down into certain things. So in marriage, there's one that each person's time for themselves. Okay. So Jonathan me encouraging Jonathan to go do the things that fill him up, which you probably know, basketball, poker, sports. He loves football Sundays. Like, good. You know, he's a guy. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm describing it, but like, these are very important to him and I love it about him. And so encouraging him to do his time, you know, and in his time, guess what? That means that I get me time. It also means that he's going to have to allow me to do, like have the freedom to go do my things. But like, fun little story. Football Sundays used to be my biggest nightmare. And I was so upset about them because I was like, all Sunday long, like you get to do what you want to do. And I'm sitting around and waiting and, and I don't even see you and you're just, and you don't let me ask you questions. Like I was being a little bitter, honestly, and, and just not very enjoyable to be around. And then I realized, hold up. If you get football Sunday, I'm making my Sunday like the best Sunday ever. And either, you know, my in-laws will come help out with Juliet or will, or Juliet will hang out with Jonathan watching football. By the way, she loves sitting in the apartment and watching football with Jonathan. They cheer. She's like, ball, 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 ball. She thinks it's basketball. So she'll be like, shoot, score. Like they love it. So, so Juliet will hang out with Jonathan and I will go get a massage and I will go to a workout class and I'll walk in the park and listen to a podcast forever. And so I started to say, it's time for me to, you know, let my needs be met too. So when you give your partner the space and freedom to do what they need to do, then you give yourself also 
the space to do what you need to do. Then the next bucket is just acceptance of the down times, right? You're married to this person, you're with them a lot. So you can't expect 100% from them all of the time. It's just not fair. So allowing for that more boring time and the not talking time and the sitting on the couch and the going to bed at different times and maybe waking up at different times. Like this, this may be new stage if you're in a relationship, but that stage where it's just not as like perfect and stunning and exciting and the annoying conversations about finances and, and those times, like you want space for, for the me times. You want space for the blurry gray times because you can't deny the fact that it's going to happen, that it's going to come up. So allow space for it. But as you probably have guessed, there's one more bucket we haven't filled up, which is the connection time. And obviously that is so, so, so important and something that we don't do as intentionally as we should. And it's as simple as the classic date night um, that we all heard about growing up and and might or might not not do. Jonathan and I aren't 100% perfect at it, but we're pretty good. (laughs) We're pretty good. I want to go farther and say that we actually do. And we've spoken about this before, if you've ever heard it. We have something called a loves list as well. So you've got your own loves list and then you've got a loves list with a partner. And it's things that you guys love to do together. I wrote one for Jonathan, things I love to do with him. He wrote, wrote one for me. They're pretty similar. They're very cute, honestly. If I'm ever like a little bit annoyed by him, sorry, Jonathan, I'll go and read what he wrote. And it's so cute. It's so cute. So anyways, a list of things that you guys love doing together. So for us, it's not just date night. It's going on our run. So like Friday morning when he has a little more flexibility in his schedule. And if it's gorgeous, we, you know, we have our, our nanny that day, thank God. And so him and I will go for a run in the park and it's just so cute and we love it. And then we stop and we get our little breakfast tacos at the place across the street and we get coffee and we chat and like, it's so just nice. And tennis, like we love playing tennis. So we'll schedule in tennis or we love live music. So we'll go to a live music concert. Maybe it's a new restaurant that we've been wanting to try adventuring, Soho days. We love going and walking in Soho on the weekends. And so you find ways to do this, but the the three buckets of marriage are one, me time for each of you and encouraging it for both of you, including your partner and you. Two, is that just downtime, accepting it and allowing it. And then third is intentionally bringing in connection time that you both love to do. So that is the way to kind of combine the the enjoyment piece, like bringing in so much fun into a marriage and like really trying to focus on fun and joy. And just even those small moments, like doing the cute things the other person likes, like really working at it, but also leaning back and accepting it for it not being perfect. That's literally where this podcast comes from is like, it's okay that you get really, really, really annoyed with your partner. And it's okay if you guys don't have the most incredible conversations all the time. And you know, it's, it's okay. It's part of marriage. Like you're just be patient. Patience is, is key in marriage because you'll be out of it very soon. And then you'll love them again and be like, they're the best person. Like those ups and downs are normal. I heard that a healthy heart goes up and down. You never want to see it flatline. So the ups and downs ride that wave and you just keep getting higher and higher. So it's very fun. So now we've covered my first two flavors. Actually, no, that's not true. Oh, we've covered only one flavor because we filled, we created the bowl. We filled my first flavor, which is being a wife. Obviously, if you can imagine, my second one is being a mom, which is just the most magical, beautiful, special thing in the entire world. And motherhood, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I think each person, you know, does it their own way. And I found that being as, as intuitive with yourself and intentional with what you want to offer your kid is important. It's just each person has their own way of mothering and each kid is different. So like I've tried to read books and listen to podcasts on motherhood and I've, I've found some good things. If anyone has um, more, I'd love to listen to more, but really what I've just found is that tuning in with myself and tuning in with Juliet and talking with Jonathan about it has been by far the most amazing, spectacular way to go about it. But I will say this much, there's two parts to it and we've kind of alluded it or I've alluded to it already in this, in this episode is intention and joy and fun in it. So the intention portion, and this actually comes from my life coach, she's the best, 
is she said, sit down and think about the things that really, really matter to you in motherhood and the things that you want to give to Juliet. So for example, like values that matter a lot to you that you really want her to focus on. Like if it's respect, that you want her to be respectful or if you want to have discipline or if you want to have just pure fun and only fun. And, you know, I, I actually remember my mom saying to me over and over again that like the biggest thing for her was that her her kids, me and my sister, had a super, super, super close relationship. Like she did everything for that and it worked. My sister and I are best, best, best friends in the entire world and love each other. So So sit down and come up with the values that are really important to you and how you can actually achieve giving those values. You know, or it's like sharing, like it's silly things. Of course, you'd love to give them all, but but making sure you're doing it in a way that's like, this is very important to me. So being intentional also, even just with schedule, like intentional about things you want to do with them. Like if you want to try going to this park or because it's too easy for life to kind of like swallow you and it to be busy and the kids wakes up late and this this is this is is crazy but if you are intentional about activities you want to do values you want to give your kid ways you want to be around them how that you want them to see you and your husband together how you want them to see you with friendships and and all of that just really intentional about being a mother and motherhood and letting your kid obviously open it up for you because it's not so rigid. It's it's really an amazing thing about women as we are flow, like can flow with it. So these are my my little pieces of advice that have helped me. And then the last thing is to, I think, have a lot of fun with it. It's I, I find joy to be the most expansive thing in the entire world and the most attractive thing in the entire world to anything that you want is to find joy in every single thing you do. So if you love to do something, go do it with your kids. You know, if Jonathan like loves music and live music and he puts on these like adorable little music videos with Juliet in the house and they dance for like hours and Juliet loves it. And now she loves all the songs that he loves. And like for them, that's so special. Like I love to go to the park. So guess what? Juliet is in the stroller with me and at the park like every single day. And we have these cute picnics and like we chat about whatever she sees. <laughs> like it's just so nice. So things that you love to do, do it with your kids. It is a really spectacular way to connect with your kids. So connection, love, obviously presence, like being intentional, thinking about the way you want a parent and then being present and having fun. So we've got my first two. Okay. So there's the me, the bull, there's first flavor, wife, second flavor, being a mom and making sure that these things are scheduled into my day, that my time with Juliet scheduled in my connection with Jonathan throughout the week and all of that is scheduled in the time for myself is scheduled in. Now my third main bucket is my business because here I am and I love it. And it's everything to me. You know, I, I really, 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 really want to help a lot of people. So when it comes to my third flavor of my ice cream bowl, my business, I really try as much as I possibly can to simplify it so that I can be super, super efficient. Because as an entrepreneur, you can take on a million things and think about a million things on top of the other million things you're thinking about. And it just gets chaotic. And at times you can not get anything done because you just have so many things to do, right? So what I've learned to be super, super helpful is to simplify um, what you're doing. And so I, I try to think of like the most important projects I'm working on. So my clients being a huge, the main thing, you know, of course, um, I've got my one-on-one clients who are my heart and soul and everything. And I love it love it so much. Every part of my business I love, you know, but this is really where I began, whereas my one-on-one clients. Then I have my clients in my program, Feel Love Now, building out Feel Love Now with so much heart and soul because it is my core curriculum. It's everything that I do with my clients and put into this little capsule of brilliance for human beings to go and live their best life. So to give my all to that, right? To give my all to my one-on-one clients, to give my all to to feel of now in the different sectors of it. Um, And then the third part is the podcast. You know, I I really love it. And that goes along with like 
marketing and relationship building. And, and there's just so much within this medium that I could not find more enjoyable and fun. And, and this medium kind of helped me in general with like things that, not that I enjoyed a little bit less, but like I found that for lack of a better term, like content creation and social media to be kind of that extra clutter that I wasn't like so excited to get to. So this allowed it to be more enjoyable because this there's clips of this that that come out and are just pure goals. I think so from mainly like interviewing people and the things that they have to say and hopefully things that we have to say back. Um, also, this is very fun for Jonathan and I to do in another moment of connection for us. It also fills me up because I love doing it. So it's kind of all of the things. But the podcast and just making sure that that's going. So I, I really narrowed it down to the thing, the needle movers, for lack of a better term. And I make it so that every single day I know my priorities and I block my time off. And I just think very clearly of I need to get this, 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 and this done, let's say, in order for tomorrow for me to be one step higher, you know, like thinking very logically about what needs to get done, not the extra fluff. You know, the easiest one for me was that email was like such a fluff in my life. I'd sit and I'd like delete the ones I didn't need and I would respond and then they would respond and then I would respond back and then I got nothing done. So like email, just like, not that I more or less cut it out, but it, it's definitely like died down. So email scrolling through Instagram was one that just distracted quite a bit, like cutting out those distractions, the things that don't move the needle. Because if you're trying to be, you know, a business owner and a mom and a white, like anything that's going to distract the process is not helping you whatsoever. So narrowing down to the most important things and getting them done efficiently. So I find that efficiency is extremely important, that time blocking is very important, that priorities and making sure you know what is the most important to get done. Like these are probably the most important things of organizing your day and, and creating a business. But I think actually I take that back because I think the most, the most, the most important part of it is to do the most of the things that you actually enjoy doing. And that's where this like pleasure over pressure comes in. Because if you put pressure on yourself for the business to look a certain way perfectly and and be a certain way and this and that, like, first of all, you don't do as well and you don't enjoy it as much. And it's just, it doesn't unfold the way it should. First is if you follow the things that feel really good. Like if you focus on how you want to feel in all of these buckets, but in business, let's say like, I want to feel freedom in my business. I want to feel like I'm helping people. I want to feel like I'm connecting with cool people. And I don't want to feel like I'm sitting on my email all the time. (laughs) That's not what I want to feel like. Of course, you have to do some admin work. I found that, you know, over the years as I built the business and have been able to hire people and delegate, like that has also been huge. So I looked at the things that just were creating major clutter in my life and I didn't enjoy doing and I've been able to delegate them and other people do those things better than me shocker. So, so it's just, it's been able to really grow into that, which has been so fun. And again, I can, I would love to go deeper into all of these buckets into, in a different episode of each. If you know, let me know, always message me, love you by Remy. Let me know what you want to hear, the questions you want. And I would love to tell you guys. And then just last but not least is all of the toppings of this ice cream, because at this point, to repeat myself yet again, we've got the cup of the ice cream or the cone or whatever you want to get your ice cream with. But that is the the me time that is so important and making sure you get your needs met and asking for what you need and creating time for that and your loves list and and the, just really building out time for yourself. Then you've got your three scoops of ice cream and I want you to decide your three scoops, right? So the three parts of your life that are super important, okay? One to three, two, whatever, whatever feels best to you. But I'm assuming most people out there are going to have three parts of your life that just are the biggest parts that you just have to give to and have to fit in into every single day. Okay, so mine are marriage, being a mom and my business. And of course, in, in that is also a family member. Like I find my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my sister, like those people fit into that as well. If if one of them could be a family bucket, but really just those in general. So those three, marriage, mom, 
and and business and then breaking them each down. So marriage, breaking it down into ways that it works for you, but making sure that you have connection time for sure, for sure, for sure, freedom time for sure, and acceptance time for the in-betweens. And motherhood, intentional, being super intentional as what type of mom you want to be and what values you want to instill in your kids. One thing I forgot to say that I I like um, with that is I wrote out from my childhood, from my parents, like things that I loved about my childhood and things that they gave me. And then I added things that maybe I felt like I also extra want to give. I actively didn't put things that like I quote unquote, didn't like about the, you know, like things that would change because I never want to focus on the negative and there really isn't so much. Thank God a million times. But if you want to do this, it's really fun. So write down the things you loved about your childhood and the things you'd love to continue in, in your new family and your, you know, extension of you and then add things that you want to add to it. You can also do it for your husband's family too and see the things that you love about them and then never focus on things you don't love. Pretty please, I beg of you, just add things that you want to continue to add. So so that's motherhood. And then business, it's try to simplify it and to only work on the top priorities and don't let the clutter come into it. Delegate if you can and have so much fun. Like make it as fun as humanly possible, even if it's a job that you don't love. And you know, come talk to me if you have a job that you don't love, because I'd love to get you to a job that you do. But try to find fun in whatever, whatever, whatever you're doing. You're here for this one life. Like, do it, you know, do it, do it, do it pretty, please. And I adore you all. And then for the extra toppings, which we got to love, my friends are my everything. So it's not like they're just an add on to my life. Like they're really everything. Imagine the best sprinkles you've ever seen in your entire life. And that is my friends and planning lunches with them and fun dinners. And I even want to do like a friend trip and, and calling them and just all of the things like friends, 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 super, super, super important. You know, we probably don't even focus on this enough, but my friendships giving back, like it is really important to me to give back in any way I can. And it's the sprinkle, you know, it can't be my every single day focus because I don't have that that time and that energy for every single thing. I wish I did, but I find ways to give back as often as I can and as involved as I can, you know, community building. And I love to do like Torah classes and, you know, with Juliet's school and stuff like that. Like just any type of community building. I love that stuff. It is extra sprinkles on the top of this beautiful ice cream. This is the way that I want you to go look at your life and see where your needs aren't being met because that's the first and foremost. So pretty, please, pretty, please start with the me time. Then look at the three most important buckets in your life and how you are going to fill those up every single day so you can be intentional with them and have fun with them. And then go and add the sprinkles. And I guarantee you, when you do this, you're going to live such a better life. You're going to be happy. You're going to have more energy. You're going to feel more clear. You're going to get more done. People are going to enjoy being around you more because you're going to feel just more present. It's, it's a way to, to build your life that you're just going to like, it's going to feel better. Trust me. I've done all of the things. I've done the messy life of this life. And, and this is where I've landed for the recipe for success. So please go try it out. Enjoy it. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. Love you by Remy. Like I said, I'd love to help out. And I adore you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you liked it as much as we did. Now go send it to someone who needs to hear it because we know that dating, relationships, marriage can be tough, but we want to make it less tough. And remember, you're allowed to hate your husband. Whatever you're feeling is allowed. So go send it to a friend, to your sister, your brother, maybe your boyfriend, a husband, whoever needs to hear this, send it to them. And while you're at it, click the follow button, click the review button. Always feel free to reach out if you have any questions and we're so excited to see you in our next episode.